Here, Mr. Bergman, would you like a peanut? I would love a peanut. I like peanuts. Thank you for sharing with me, oh, Mr. Sam. Oh, you're Sams. so very welcome. This mm. is something else that I've learned from my children, that sharing is a nice thing to do. Sharing is good. Sharing Ooh, is can't. caring. Sharing is caring. My children also watch a lot of Barney. Yeah. Oh, is that a Barney thing? Yeah. My kids never got into Barney. Yeah, they're speak. probably a little older. Yeah. A little too old. Sharing. Why are we talking about sharing? Here, I'm talking about Well, covalent bonding is when two atoms share oh, yeah. electrons. Share. So we're sharing electrons, it's like uh, sharing uh, peanuts. Yeah. Here, I have another one for you. Ah! <laughs> That's empty. I already ate it. Yeah, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, hey, we better talk about covalent bonding so we don't waste our kids' time. These are good. I know they are. Okay. All right, so we need to define a couple of terms here. All right, the first one is a covalent bond. So a covalent bond is where two or more valence electrons are shared between two atoms. Uh huh. So you shared with me, but it's not exactly no, the same thing because exactly you actually gave it to me. Mm -hmm. So it's a share thing where we're both kind of get a piece of it. That'd uh -huh. be kind of weird. And a single bond is when one pair of electrons are shared between two bonds. There's actually double and triple, which we'll talk about later uh -huh. when we do some other things. And folks, what you should do is just copy these down, and then you'll see how they apply a little uh -huh. bit later. So it's the sharing principle. Okay, so here let's talk about how what causes them to be attracted to each other. Guess what? It's the same thing we learned about in the last two bondings. Positive things are attracted to negative things. Now, it's not the positive ion. It's actually the nucleus of the one is attracted to the valence electrons of the other. And the nucleus of the other is attracted to the valence electrons of the one. Okay. So it's still positive, but things are attracted to negative. That's what causes the world to get stuck together. Yeah. Is positive subtracted to negative. Interesting question. Why does positive things attract negative things? Uh... You don't know? It does. Because it does. It's actually the correct answer. Because <laughs> scientists don't know the answer to that question. What causes, po why are positive things attracted to negative things? We don't know. Fundamental force of nature. But it's a nature. fundamental force of nature. So anyways, but that's something that's just true. We don't know exactly know why. You'll win the Nobel Prize if you figure that one out. Okay, so in a covalent bond, here we have uh, two atoms, um, and they're sharing. So the, the blue atom here on the right, if you will, the blue valence electrons, he's got seven valence electrons. Okay. And the guy with the red valence electrons, they aren't really colored. That's just for illustrative purposes. Here's a big word. They're sharing these two electrons. So they each have eight. So they each have eight. And this yeah. actually would be called a single covalent bond because they're sharing one pair. A pair is two okay. electrons. Yeah. Were you going to say something? Mm, no? Probably, but I forgot. Okay. Now, to understand this, we have to understand a few more definitions. Again, this is probably a pause and write down uh, moment here. Yep. Okay, but let's just kind of go over it okay. while you're pausing or rewriting down. The electronegativity we call from um, the atomic theory unit. Yep, that's the one where my son and I were having the tug of war. Yes. Yep. Um, the attraction of one atom for the electrons of another. Remember, fluorine is the highest. Remember, the smaller they are, the stronger they are. Now, we've got some new terms here. Now, this is important to understand. There's some, some there's a thing called uh, non-polar covalent bond. Okay, non-polar, meaning it's not polar. polar. Now, we'll explain polar in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, the electrons are equally shared between two atoms. Okay, so they each get them this equal amount. Right. Okay. And there's po polar covalent bonds. Mm-hmm. And that's when they're unequally shared. Okay, so one of the atoms kind of gets the electrons more often than the other one. Yeah. Kind of like when my kids share. They don't really equally share, but they'll, mm -hmm. they'll sort of like let the other kid touch the toy. And lastly, a dipole. That's when a bond or molecule has unequal sharing. All right, so if we have a polar covalent bond, there's unequal sharing, it creates a dipole. That's correct. Okay. All right, to illustrate that... A nonpolar bond is, think of the um, peanuts. peanuts that we were playing, we we're sharing. So if we are fighting for the peanuts, and if we are equally strong, Mr. Sam's and I are twins. Did you know that? We're twins. Ah! Ah! I can't pull them away from him, Mr. Sam's. Ah! He can't pull them away from So they're equally shared. Right. Nonpolar bond. Nonpolar bond. However. However, since Mr. Sam's is weaker than me. What? <laughs> I get to be the strong yeah, one. Yeah, All right. And so if, ah! I pull, guess oh. what? The electrons are closer to me, unequally shared. Okay? Right. So we're still sharing. Yeah. I didn't take them. No. We're still sharing. Right. But they're closer to him more of the time. So electrons being negatively charged, if Mr. Bergman has them more of the time than I do, Mr. I, Bergman is slightly negative, And I am good. slightly positive. Well, how, how'd you get to be positive? Because you're stronger. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully that helps you understand how this works. 
Now the way we draw this from a Lewis dot structure perspective, if I have chlorine, Cl and Cl, chlorine has seven, seven valence electrons. I'm going to put this one right here. And chlorine, the other chlorine, of course, has seven, seven valence electrons. Now, based upon their electronegativities, now their electronegativities are right here, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a table of electronegativities. Turns out that chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.16. Yeah, both of them have so 3.16. They're the same because yeah. 3.16 and 3.16, of course, are the same. So if this is 3.16 and this is 3.16, well, they're twins. Yeah. So they're going to share them in the middle. So there is no twins. charge. And they're probably about the same strength, aren't they? Yeah. Yours aren't identical. My though. twins are not identical. One is definitely stronger than the so other one. <laughs> you would actually draw this like this. Now, this is, because the there is un, there is equal sharing, this is called a non-polar non bond. Now, oh, good. I like on things. hydrogen... Let's do another example. Let's do hydrogen bonded with chlorine. That's hydrochloric okay. acid. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and hydrogen just has one. Now, if we look at its electronegativity, hydrogen is 2.2, and chlorine is 3.16. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought everybody wanted eight. Yeah, I, well, hydrogen's one of those ones he's happy with two or oh, zero. Zero equals right. eight. Remember all that stuff. So if hydrogen gets two, it's happy because it only or wants zero. to do it. In this case, actually, well, he's not well, he's sharing. Yeah, sharing. He's getting two. He's getting two. So um, the higher the number, the stronger they are. So chlorine okay. is stronger than hydrogen. And so therefore, the electrons, it would actually be more appropriate to draw it like this. And the hydrogen would be here. And because this side has more electrons, we would put a little, that's a little slightly, sigma actually, uh, negative. Lowercase delta. Uh, or delta, pardon me. And this is slightly positive because the electrons are more over on this side than that side. And we actually we usually would draw an arrow through this like this. Pointing and to the negative side. Pointing yeah. to the negative side. Right. So this is a polar bond. So... You, you're, we're talking about all these electronegativity differences. How do we know when it's polar or nonpolar? Well, we have a chart, Mr. Sanders. Oh, a chart. So you've copied on a chart. You may want to print, but this is almost too It's worthless. pretty simple. Yeah, if you are less than 0.5 difference of electronegativity. Meaning we'll you just, subtract the values. Right. Okay. Then it's nonpolar. All right. If it's between 0.5 and 2.1, and this is sort of an ish number. Yeah, they're squishy. It's kind of flexible. And actually, if you get above 2.1, it's... Uh, it's it becomes so polar that then instead of sharing, it. it takes it. It yeah. becomes ionic. So let's just do some examples.